Hey everybody, I am so sorry. I've had lots of tech issues tonight. I hope you can hear me even. Can you hear me? I don't know if you can hear me. If you, if you, if you can hear me, give a little jig. Okay, anyways, I my apologies. We had so many tech issues, but I have to say I'm kind of glad. <laughs> I know it sounds kind of crazy, but this is kind of what happens. This is like how life works. This is how, how it is, right? And you have to kind of figure it out. You have to scramble and try on different things. I don't want to waste too much time here with that, but I'm so glad I'm finally here. Um, it's going to be a quicker class, but I still am so glad that I'm here with you all. So I want to say I am really happy to be here in this incredible virtual festival with all these amazing healers and coaches and teachers and speakers, and it's such an honor to be here. So Welcome everybody. I am Tamar Field, if you don't know, Field Gersh. And um, so I originally actually had a class topic that I was gonna teach on, which is why celebrating oneself is the most selfless act you can do. And I still very much stand by it and can talk to you about it for forever. However, in the last day, I kind of got inspired to talk about something a little different. So I hope you kind of go with the punches and just roll with me here. Because what I really want to talk about tonight, to, tonight here, today there, right? I'm in Paris Khanna, beautiful Paris Khanna, Israel, um, is really more about the spiritual act of creating a goal. And um, I've been fired up about big, magical, beautiful goals lately. And I think most people kind of feel like, ugh goals. It's like all goals. Life coaches all talk about goals all the time. And type A personalities who are need something really organized are all about goals. And I don't really want to do goals. And it kind of came up actually in a networking event that I was a part of. Um, and I, that I was a part of uh, yesterday, actually. And it came up about big goals. And, and there was a debate. Should I should we like, you know, should people do big goals? They feel like they're pushing people too much. And so that's why I kind of felt like, you know what, guys, I'm going to talk about big magical goals because I really do think it is an incredible, important thing for us to do and really is the most spiritual thing that we can do. And I'm going to discuss that a little bit more. But more, more importantly, I think it also is a perfect timing because we're about to go into Rosh Hashanah. We're about to go into new beginnings, new year, reboot, restart. And what is a better way to do that by setting goals, right? It's kind of cliche, right? Like New Year's and Rosh Hashanah, all that kind of, let's set goals. But there's a reason for that because it's really in a, an amazing way to say, okay, last year was last year. Let's look over here and see what's in the future for us. What do we want to create here? So today, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about big, magical goals, what they are, why would we want to do that, and how do we do that? Okay, so let's get going. I'm like super into this topic, so I hope you guys are as well. What is a, a big magical goal? What does that mean, right? Like as opposed to another kind of goal. So how I define big magical goal is kind of when you're thinking like, um, I can't do that. Um, no way, man. There's no way I'm going to be able to do that. Something that feels really stretchy really like, I don't think this is ever going to happen. I don't think I'm ever going to be able to do this. That's a big magical goal. Something that really is stretching you. It's really different than a small goal because a small goal, right? You set out to do a small goal and you accomplish it and you feel really good. And that's kind of the job of a small goal. Make you feel really good, really easily, no problem. But a big magical goal has a totally different purpose for us. And you're not going to feel good right away because it takes a lot of work. But it does a whole, it, it's stretching us in ways we've never been stretched before. And it does things for us. It, it really kind of allows us to really grow into our next version, which is why it's so important for us to kind of do that. Very, very different. Listen, small goals are really important also, but big magical goals will take us to places that we've never gone before, which is why it's really, really important and why it's a great thing to do. So, you know, I spoke a little bit about believing that spiritual, that, 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 big magical goals, big goals for us, stretchy goals for us are really a, a spiritual act, right? It's really kind of allowing us to have this like real deep connection with Hashem, God, the universe, however you connect to that, because it really is allowing us to go into our greatness. It's allowing us to tap into these gifts that we were given, right? And that we get, that we get to do whatever we want with. It really feels like to me, like tefillah in some ways, prayer, right? That we're really kind of 
saying like, I'm here. I'm here to, be, to, do my, to bring my greatness to, to the field, to be to the, to the stage, right? To really be here and bring some amazing things. So I do want to point out, though, that these goals that we're setting for ourselves, right, that, they, that we don't need them. We are worthy without them. Just the fact that we are born, that we were created, makes us worthy enough to be here, and we don't have to do a stinking goal to match that, to, to make ourselves even more worthy, more lovable. But it, it, as well as the fact that most, uh, most people set goals because of their, they feel like this lackingness, right? They're like, I, you know, I, I want to lose a certain amount of, of weight so I can look beautiful and feel beautiful. I want to make a certain amount of money in my business so I can feel successful. That's not where we're going to be setting our big magical goals from. That's not where we're going to be going in the direction of. We don't want to be setting for the lack of more of a place of let's set this a huge goal for myself because I think it'll be really fun because it would be really great to see how much we can grow and how much we can, what I can do, what, am, what is so far beyond what I've done before, right? From a place of really having a lot of fun with it. So that's kind of where we want to do it because when we set these goals for ourselves, we're really opening up to the possibility of revealing the level of greatness living inside of us. The level of greatness, right? Because we can't really tap into that until we push ourselves a little bit. And we're just kind of living our lives or doing these smaller goals. You don't tap into the level of greatness that you do unless you go for a big goal. I think that's pretty freaking cool. I don't know about you guys, but I think that's pretty freaking cool. So a little bit before we go deeper into this, a little like 101 on the brain for many of you might know this, many maybe not, but our brain, we've got like two kind of sections of our brain, right? We've got the primitive brain, the animal brain, and then we've got the prefrontal cortex, which is our human brain. And so our primitive brain is what is kind of like, my coach actually describes it as um, a, a, a toddler with a knife in your, in your head. <laughs> where you're kind of like, it just does whatever it wants to. It doesn't like watch out, kind of running around. I like to think of it as a toddler with sticky hands. All those of you who have toddlers out there, right? You kind of like, imagine if you're like, your toddler has sticky hands, you didn't wash your toddler's hands and they're running around, they're getting everything sticky. That's kind of like our primitive brain. It just offers us thought after thought after thought. And it's not intentional at all. It's mostly like, you can't do that. What are you thinking? Like, not gonna happen. You've never done it in the past. You're not, really, you're not as smart as she is. You're not going to be able to do it. He would be better at that. That's our primitive brain. It totally means well. It's programmed for survival. However, we don't need to survive in the same way as we used to. So it doesn't really serve a purpose for us anymore. And then our prefrontal cortex is what I like to think of as, our, as the babysitter of that brain. And it's the place where all of your goals and your potential live in. And that's where we set our goals from. And so when you set a goal, you are then giving real structure to your brain. You're saying, hey, I'm going to bring in the babysitter now. I'm going to bring in the babysitter and we're going to have a place to go. It's like literally kind of putting in an address and ways, right, or GPS and saying, I want to go this direction. You need to use your prefrontal cortex, the part of your brain that's thinking of your future in order to get there, right? So that's a really kind of quick little definition of how the brain works, okay? And that goals are really a way of deciding on purpose that you, what you want your results to be. You're always gonna have results and they're always gonna be things that you decide to do, but this one is on purpose in deciding which direction you wanna go in. So that's a little bit of the, of the, of the brain 101. And we're gonna talk a little bit about, I wanna tell you about three main points of why we wanna set big magical goals. Okay, because they're really, really important. This is what I really want to sell you on. Because again, I think most people feel like, oh, I can just go with the flow. It's going to work out. It's going to happen. And it will work out. But you will not grow and you will not expand in the way that you would want to here on earth. Right? So the first reason is to allow us to, 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 to help you think better, to think deeper, to think in different kinds of ways, to expand Right? That's the kind of what I was talking about at the beginning, to really kind of open up a part of your mind that you never have before because you're asking yourself to do things and think things that you've never done before. So that's kind of the number of the first one. The second one is kind of my favorite. It's kind of like the Kabbalah of like reasons why to, uh, to, to set a big magical goal. And it is, it's specifically, this is a great reason, it requires you to practice believing in yourself and practice believing in something that doesn't exist yet. 
in order to create this goal, right? So what does that mean? You're, you're really thinking of your future. You're thinking about what is my future going to be able to do? What, what, what could happen here that hasn't happened yet for me? And the amazing thing about that is if you can create that skill for yourself, knowing how to believe in yourself and believe in your future before it actually happens, you can duplicate that over and over and over again, and you can expand your life over and over again as well. So that's the amazing thing about it, right? You're creating your life from your future, right? From your imagination, what could be, right? What could be is an amazing place to be. And if you're only looking into your past or looking into your present and defining your life that way, right? And what you're capable of, you will not have to be able to practice believing in yourself because you already do. You already believe that you can, you know, do the things that you can do already. You don't need to work on that, right? You already feel confident that you feel confident that you can like pour yourself a glass of juice and you can go for a run and you can do the work that you're doing. But when you're starting to believe in something that you haven't done yet before, that's believing in your future. And that's an incredible thing. So that's an amazing skill. The third reason, the last reason why I really want you guys to really create big magical goals for yourself is because well, this is what I like to describe it to my clients. I want you to become a scientist to your life, not a student. Our whole lives are walking around, we're learning like students. Somebody else has the information, we're gonna receive this one piece of information, we're gonna try it out and hope that it works and, and that's how we're gonna do it. As opposed to a scientist, which is gonna go around and really try this and try that. Really approach life like an experiment. Is this gonna work? Is that gonna work? I don't know, right? And try it over and over. You're going to allow yourself to, to really have fun with it, right? And like really see what, what, what is this gonna be like? And so approaching your life like a scientist as opposed to a student really, really, really will help you expand in ways. You're going to try all the different hows. If you think about anybody who has invented anything, right? They don't just like try one thing and they're like, oh, didn't work. Sorry. Because if you only had one way of doing it, if you only had one how of how to do something, it didn't work, that's it. But if you're a scientist, you know that it takes experiments to test out different kinds of things and you're gonna be more willing to test and test and test and test and test until you finally reach it. So those are the three hopefully compelling reasons why, um, why I want you guys to really create these big magical goals for yourself as we're like, you know, going into Rosh Hashanah, a new year, new beginnings. And it's, it's, it really is gonna be an amazing thing. Um, this is the most important piece of information. If you haven't heard anything I said, I want you to hear this, that achieving a goal is not the point of setting a goal, okay? It's about who you become when going for that goal. What person you grow into is what is the most important thing, not the actually achieving of the goal. And many people get lost in that. Many people, they set a goal and they go for it and if they don't get it, they feel like crap. They really, they do uh, so much self-doubt. They're really kicking themselves. And the purpose of a big goal is actually to feel good, to, to work towards something, not to beat yourself up about it. And so many people do that. I heard this, um, my, my, my coach today shared with us this interesting thing of um, surfers in Hawaii. And these Christian missionaries, the first Christian missionaries who came to the island banned surfing altogether. First of all, I think that everybody there was surfing, they were naked and they were not into that. And, but most importantly, they banned it because surfing, everyone was just doing it for fun. They weren't achieving anything. They weren't even competing with each other. They were like not into it. They're like, this is not good enough. You cannot do something unless it's for a purpose, to reach a goal, to achieve something. So they banned it, except for some other white people who were surfing clothed and they had to be able to compete in competitions. And then that was when it was okay. And I'm telling you the story because that is the ex exact example of how kind of our society has, has created, has become this place where you really only should be doing a goal if you can achieve it. And if you can't, you should feel badly about yourself. And I can't tell you how much I don't believe that is true and how much you're missing the point of a goal if all you're thinking about is I need to achieve it, I need to achieve it. 
okay? I only have a few more minutes with you guys because, um, because of this, all these tech different issues. So I'm gonna jump right into it and really talk about the work. So if you have a pen, if you have a journal, grab it. Grab it now is a great time to be able to write this down. We're gonna talk a little bit about how do we set these big magical goals. The first thing you wanna know is like, what do you want? What kind of goal would you want? What goal feels big and stretchy, expansive, kind of like, I don't think I could do that, but would be cool to try, right? You want that kind of a goal. And if you don't know what that goal is, then I'm gonna give you an exercise. So you'll start from this place if you don't know what goal you want. You wanna make a list of 25 items of things that you really, really want, okay? This could be in your business or in professional life. I would keep it to one, which one you want. And you wanna write down 25 items of things that you really, really want. Now, the thing here is that you want to have one item of things that you really, really want that you already have in your life. And then the next one, things that you really, really want that you don't have but you would like. And you're gonna interweave them together. This, this piece is kind of a little trick to the brain to have you starting to desire and want from a place of abundance, right? Because you're wanting things that you really want that you maybe created for yourself last year, two years ago, whatever it is, and you have it now. And then you're wanting, for, wanting something that doesn't exist yet, but it allows you to make it feel like excited about it. Not like you're lacking it, but like, ooh, I get to create this. So you're gonna make a list of 25 different items back and forth, back and forth, right? And then choose one of, that, one of those that you wanna focus in on, one of those big goals, okay? So, you know, it might be maybe finding your soulmate. It might be showing up on social media five times a week for my, for my uh, business, if that feels really stretchy and scary. Maybe making a certain amount of money in your business. Um, my kids are surfers, so theirs is like, you know, getting up on the board, riding away for at least one minute, right? That's really kind of a big, a big goal for them. So you're going to, again, choose your goal, right? And after you've kind of gone through your list of 25, and then you're going to write, you're going to get very specific with it. So for example, the goal of, for my kids, getting up on, on their surfboards, you know, riding away for a minute. They're gonna write like exactly which board they want to be surfing on. They're gonna to wanna to talk about which beach they wanna be surfing on. Maybe who's gonna go with them when they go. What time of day will they be at the beach? Be as specific as you can, right? More specific, the better, okay? Then once you get all those details down, right? Also just note, your brain is totally at this point gonna be like, how are you gonna do that? That's not gonna work. Oh my gosh, there's gonna be like flooding of self-doubt and everything like that. Your brain's gonna think that something has gone wrong here. I wanna tell you that nothing has gone wrong here. It is exactly what it's supposed to be. All it is right now is that you're starting to expand and to stretch your brain and you don't have the beliefs and thoughts yet to, to back it up. That's what's going on right there. So nothing has gone wrong if your brain's kind of freaking out. That's what's happening, okay? The next piece is that you're gonna write that all down. Write that all the specifics down on a piece of paper. There is something about pen, you're, you're you know, writing it physically on a piece of paper from pen to paper that is really kind of literally changes what's going on in your brain. And also to have it around with you so that you can keep on reading and keep on reading. You want it kind of in your face, reading it over and over as much as possible, okay? Then you're going to download all those thoughts that your brain is offering you that we're talking about before. Uh, you know, again, for the example of my kids and surfing, you're not strong enough to do that. I, you've never done that before. I have no idea how you're gonna do that. All those thoughts, all those questions, all those things that your brain is offering you that like, it's not gonna happen, that's okay. You're gonna say to your brain, okay, well, I'm gonna write, I'm gonna take you seriously. I'm gonna write down all of your concerns and I'm gonna come up with a bunch of solutions because that is the next step. The next step and the last step of this is that you're gonna write down all those questions and then you're gonna take yourself to your future self. The person who is riding that wave for one minute, or that person who's making 100K in their business, or that person who has fallen deeply in love with their soulmate. You can either do this by writing yourself a letter, having your future self write you a letter, or you write your future self a letter. You could do that by finding a really sweet spot that you love and do a meditation and bring yourself there. However way you wanna do that, really connect to that person who already has achieved that goal. Okay, and then you're gonna go to those questions and those concerns that your brain has offered you, and you're gonna offer a solution from a place of your future self already achieving them. So for example, one of the questions, right, like how you're not strong enough to get up on that board for a minute and ride that wave. Okay, well, this is how you did it. 
you worked out three times a day and did these particular exercises and da 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 da, you're gonna actually give yourself the how. You're gonna give yourself the plan exactly coming from your future self, accessing that person who already has done it. And you're gonna write it all out. And the last step is to then do those solutions that your brain has given you, right? Going for it, making it happen. So guys, this is the time, right? We're about to like enter a new year, fresh brand new year. I wanna invite you to dream. I wanna invite you to stretch yourself far beyond you ever thought possible, right? I wanna invite you to really join this partnership between God, the world, other human beings, and be able to mark, give your mark and your, your, what you can bring to the world. This is the time to do it, right? So I think I'd have to sign off. Unfortunately, again, I didn't have that much time because of the tech issues, but I just wanna say thank you guys for being here. If you wanna come and hang out with me, um, I think, I believe all of my links are, you can find it on the website, or if not, you can join me. I hang on Instagram a lot, mostly Instagram these days at Tamar Tribe underscore, uh, underscore coaching. Yeah, that's right. Tamar, Tamar Tribe underscore coaching. But thank you so much for, um, for having me and sending you guys so much love.